observing and listening to your knowledge is Shravana. You listen to the sounds of the water and the birds because they are already in your mind. You only remember it. You know the water gets you wet even if you don't touch it. You know that clouds cover the sun also though you have never been over them. All that is known is Shravana. Everything you have read, what you have learned, what you remember, and what you ignore or have doubts, is Shravana. Analyze if you are Jiva, Ego, or God, and even if you later conclude that you are Atma, this is also Shravana, you heard. All the activities of the body, or parts of the body, the elements earth, water, light, shadows, any form or concept that you perceive. The night, hunger, intellect, thirst, old age. All transformation, desires, sadness, attachments. Even the act of rational understanding is shravana, what you learned. You recognize everything you see and hear because it was already in your mind. Listening and perceiving all this is shravana, the state before reflection. Observing and listening to your knowledge is shravana. Manana, it is beyond what is observed by our senses and is also above all thoughts of rejection or acceptance. Vedanta affirms that following these inclinations leads us in the opposite direction to unity. In other words, the plurality of what is observed and our fears and desires must be transcended by approaching the true cause of all these phenomena. For example, we already saw the water, the clouds, the sun, and the swan. We first look at the relationship between the sun and the water. The sound we hear is produced by the liquid state. We know that the sun melts ice and snow and that this lake water is the result of the action of the sun. The clouds that we observe are also a product of the solar rays that evaporate the water of the lakes. The wind that moves the clouds is also a product of the thermal difference caused by the sun. And my body is made up of 70% water, like fruits and fish. Seems that the water is uncleanliness but the water is always pure. It may seem like rain, other times it is urine, blood, or the sap of a plant. It can be coffee or fruit juice. But when it evaporates it is separated from all adhesion by the effect of the sun. Then, all observed is an effect of solar activity. This reflection called manana, will lead us to understand that plurality is only an appearance. That all forms and all elements have come from a single law that governs the totality of what we know and also what we do not understand. If we can understand manana, we will be ready to enter the next state. Nidijashana is not a describable state, nor is it a mystery. Vedanta explains that the practice of manana, the reflection in the totality, will lead us to understand the illusory nature of the universe observed by the human being. Only when the difference between illusion and reality is fully understood does a chain of superhuman cognitive processes set in motion. Viveka. The idea of the existence of different causes disappears in the right knowledge of the reality of the manifested universe, and the space-time laws. Nidijashana in Vedanta is the totality of Braham. Nidijashana should not be explained, it must be done through the practices of Shravana and Manana, observation, and reflection. This process is called Vedantic meditation.